Hi guys and welcome to C++ tutorial of a point of sale system. This is a must see tutorial. I strongly advise you guys to have a good look at it. There. So let me show you guys how this works. Okay, we already have some custom customized details in there, and this customer supposing he or she doesn't want the following product. You just need to do is delete and you can even delete as many as you want just delete and you see the price is reduced and in here supposing the customer wants to pay by cash and there we go we'll select that there we can even reset and enter some another customer details in there whatever the customer wants and there we go all right now and that's about 40 something pounds let's go for about 55 in cash there there we go and you can even print out whatever you want just click on print the printing is now coming up straight onto my smart notebook i will now select the very first option you won't be able to edit if you select this you can edit but i'm just gonna say no point of editing that's fine and there we go guys so that is my receipt so I'm gonna close that so hi and welcome to visual C++ of a point of sale system I'm going to start by clicking on create new project and right here I'm going to select CLR MT project right there if you don't have that the scroll around here you should be able to see the template there so I'm gonna click on that and then click on next and I'm going to give my project name I'll just call it CPP point of sale POS yeah, that's fine and click on create there all right the application is about ready so we have to click on the solution explorer because I don't have a form and right there that is the property we're looking for click on the property and this opens up this very dialog box now let me just look around here it's saying uh, it's Windows 32 my system is using Windows 64 so I'm gonna click just like you guys have seen I just click on configuration manager and in there I'm going to change this to the 64 platform and as you can see it all changed to 64 platform click on close that's fine I will now come right here you see where we have the linker and as you can see the platform here is already 64 so let's click on the link and drop it down and we select the system click on system and right there we have subsystem click on the subsystem we want to drop that down and select windows subsystem windows click on windows subsystems windows there the next thing we want to do now is to select advance right here click on the advance and where we have entry point i'm going to change that to main there you can enter whatever you like in there and i'll then click on apply click on ok there first step done okay the next task is for us to right click on the project name and select add and go for new item okay this dialog box pops up let's go for UI and inside UI I'm going to select Windows forms and right below it is the name of the form it says myform.h I'm going to keep that as the default name then click on add there the form is now being generated we just have to wait for it although there's going to be an error once the form is generated there we go we have an error so there's a way out the only way out is for us to go straight to the solution explorer and right there inside the solution explorer you see the form my form dot cpp double click on my form dot cpp 
there and that opens up in includemyform.h right in there you now need to go straight into this very forum that i'm going to show to you guys now you see right here the url of this forum will be included on the onto the description area for you guys you need to copy these lines of code let's copy it all from here up to here copy and i'm going to go straight to my system now tap down and just enter very that very lines of codes as you can see i have an error it's actually asking me to change the name of my project the name of my project is uppercase cpp and uppercase os there we go double click on that and the error should disappear you see that the error is gone if i let's say and run if i run it you will see a form but i will have to close the old system to be able to see the real form itself okay let's run it first and there we go that's the form okay but this very form you're looking at is not in here until i close the this whole system and reopen it again so let's run the form one more time and you say the form there we go that's the form but it's not on the system so i'm gonna have to close the whole system and reopen it again so you guys will have to do the same thing so come up here and just click on close there there we go now we have to reopen it again so click or click on my cpp pos it's coming up now there we go so let's go straight into the solution explorer and there that is my form dot h double click on my form dot h and we can get it. there we go that's the form now we can start changing the properties of this form go to the properties and i will set the size as 1386 by 788 press enter there okay okay now that my interface is ready let's start with the design of the interface i'm going to go straight to the toolbox here and let's select panel there and this panel let's go to the property and change the property to fix 3d you see the border style has fixed 3d so that is fine now i'm going to copy this very panel have one here let's extend this that much i move this all the way here right that is fine bring it down a little bit okay that's good select both panel and just drag it right down something like that okay let's copy another one that would be for the okay let's bring it right down here and reduce that that much okay and all the way here bring it down and copy another one and this is going to be inside here and let's reduce it and about three of those that's one two and three okay now all of these panels let's select it all and now i'm going to change the background color to cadet blue right there no we want it to be cadet blue there and these are the ones i intend to keep them as i want to keep those ones as uh, control so that's fine even the 
let's change the form itself to cadet blue right okay right here I'm going to add data preview data preview right here just drag it that much I think that's we do yeah and this data preview let's select you see where we have edit and I'm going to add as follows in here I'm going to add item click on add or we can just call it items then the next one is going to be quantity add and finally I'm going to add amount there so that's is fine click on ok there and the back color of this I'm going to change it to something brighter or something lighter a little bit that's fine and let's add let's come down here I'm going to now add a label here there we go add a label there and this very label let's change as follows come right down here and uh, where we have auto size change that to force and the color that color I'm going to make it bright and right here let's change that to no I think I'll leave it as none and uh, let's come right here you see where we have font I'm going to change the font to a barcode font that I've already installed there we go that's my barcode font there select that and click on ok you can see the data inside it is now in barcode format so let's come right down to the font size I'm going to increase the font size to something readable let's make it maybe about 24 for now and see okay that is fine and let's get it centered as well align center there okay so that will be for my barcode now the next thing we want to do is to add some buttons here come right down here buttons okay I need that and I'm gonna need two more here right we have to extend this so that's fine and bring it down total I need about 24 yeah I think that we do that's about 24 I believe 6 by 4 that's 24 that is good and I will also need some right here so for my numbers copy and drop it right in here for my numbers and let's just increase the size of this open it a little bit more all right so that is fine okay now let's design these three here come right here let's go straight to label grab a label we need one label here change the size of this label first of all let's change this let's extend it that much now for this label I'm going to change the size to 20, 20 or 24 let's come into size font size I want to make it maybe about 24 as well there 24 bold okay auto size fix okay auto size is force and the color now I'm going to leave the color okay let's click copy this copy it and I'm gonna copy another one and another one here that is fine these three here I will then change their back color to white something brighter and border style I'm gonna make them th fix 3d that is fine for these three yeah and let's copy five of those and just bring them here and up here I'm going to then add a combo box 
is it so the interface for my project is ready so all I then need to do is just to make it look a little bit more presentable but before then let me show you guys what I'm going to do with the buttons I'm going to add as follows let's go to the images right here image select image when I browse to where I have my image the very first image is going to be that of this coffee I believe there and I will repeat the same the same process for the others so let's select the next one right below it come right here and change that to something I want it to be similar okay yeah that's fine there all right this will be for drinks and this will be for coffee and so on so come in here select coffee again and yeah that's fine now I'm going to add black coffee here and now we have to repeat the same thing for the order so I suppose you guys get the whole idea okay so let's speed that up okay guys this is how the interface looks now so there so let's run it and you guys see what I'm talking about and that is it guys that is how the whole interface looks now okay that's not too bad but that's very good so let's exit out now you see these buttons what I'm trying to achieve is when, you're not, when I click on this button I want whatever amount I want it displayed here inside the cache the cache icon there so I'm now going to select every single button including the this very one here the decimal point select it all and just select all of those buttons there now I want to use just one single event so let's come in here come straight to the property select this event and in there I'm going to go to you see where we have click click events just give that the name numbers only and press enter now my events area or procedure area is ready okay first of all I'm going to start by creating a button object button objects and that is going to be I'm going to call it number or I could just call it B B equals button then I'm going to say equals save save cost and the save cost is going to be button and this button will have to be sent using a sender there enter semicolon there I'm missing an exclamation there okay now the next thing is let's use an if statement if open up a bracket lbl cash dash text that is it no text let's change that to text if it's equals equals zero because I did enter zero inside the text box then let's open up coil braces and I want LBL zero to be equals to B whatever we have inside B so grab this and paste it right here okay now 
that is going to be b dash text enter semicolon okay the first part is taken care of else if if i happens to be dealing with the let's say else if, if i happens to be dealing with the decimal point let's open up a bracket then that is going to be equals equals if it contains the decimal point okay now open up a coil braces and in there i'm going to use an if statement if this decimal is not if it does not contain okay now let's put not there that is the sign for not that is it right there if it does not contains let's say dot contains decimal point there and open up another coil braces and this is what I want it to do so I'm now going to grab all of these in fact I can just grab all of this paste it here and there and just change this very one here to plus sign okay so whatever i have in here is added to this and added to this okay that takes care of that else 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 the display is going to be this so grab all of this and write underneath here enter else and there we go and that from here down here should take care of all of those buttons that you guys are looking at so let's just run it and see how it works run now let's click on this button look at that and that is fine let's use the decimal point and try out the decimal again no I don't want it like that so I need to find a way to get that Cleared. and what about this we need that to work as well so in that now let's come back in here what did I do wrong let's have a good look at that so in here if not contains this okay and um, what about up here if this equals this all right I think I found my problem right here that is supposed to be if B contains this there so let's undo that and copy it properly copy and paste that here paste that is it so if it contains this nothing should happen if it doesn't something should happen so let me save that and run it again there we go so let's select some numbers then that's my point and that is it that is correct it's now working how I want okay that's fine so let's take care of the clear in the case of clear I'm just gonna copy this here I just want to change the value in there back to back to zero that's all so double click on C and right inside C press enter and paste there that takes care of the clear function so I'm officially done with the with all of the buttons the numeric buttons okay let's try it out again there we go clear Oh, the clear is not responding. Why? Okay, let's see. What did I do wrong again? Was that the right button? So let's double click on this button again. Yes, it is in the right place. So what's what is the problem? Okay, get rid of that. 
okay it's just supposed to be one single equal sign so let's run it and see all right now let's try it out guys clear that is fine now working as expected so with that guys i'm going to call it the end of the first part of this tutorial and i'll see you guys shortly